is it that our God cannot do? Is there anything bad that can happen to us and our God is not aware? Because it's a God that do not slumber nor sleeps. Nothing takes him unaware. While we are sleeping, he's very much awake fighting our battles fighting our cause father we thank you we are here this morning to say thank you we are here this morning to say thank you we consider coming before your presence to worship you as very important that is why we despise the weather father receive our worship this morning in Jesus precious name give the Lord a clap and please take your seat I want to welcome everyone to this first service. Your life will experience something different this week and beyond in Jesus' name. God bless you for coming. I was thinking that I will be the only one to do service today, first service. <laughs> I, I just, I prepared myself to do the first service. I preach. I listen to my preaching. I, I say shout amen. I will shout the amen. <laughs> I didn't know that people are going to respond in spite of the weather. The devil is a bastard devil. And the rain, the rain didn't come to spoil anything. There is time for everything. <laughs> so this is the season for rain. Uh, it's just that 
the people should understand that whether there is rain or not, nothing can stop them from the worship of God. I, I went to plant our church at Akwaibom. That is a place where rain can fall from morning to night. While rain is falling, people are going to church. <laughs> While rain is falling, people are going to church. Once again, you are welcome. Look at your neighbor and tell your neighbor, neighbor, I see you to be fearfully and wonderfully made. Don't look at me. Look at somebody. Say, neighbor, you are too fine. Can I hear your loudest? Amen. This month is the month of the anointing. Now, sorry. There were some few persons that God wanted me to anoint 5.30 a.m. on the dot before sunset today for something good to happen. But we are going to do it next Sunday. Whether the devil likes it or not, that oil must come upon you. Amen. They, they know themselves. In case you are not included, you don't need to bother. But they know themselves. Psalm 23. We are looking at verses 1 to 6. Ayada bada liga bada liga bada laga da laga da laga dus. Ilada yaga bada liga braga sata yaga da ba shantara ga da laga dus. The Lord is my shepherd. I shall not want. Verse 2. He made me to lie down in green pastures. He needed me beside the still waters. The tree. He restored my soul. He leaded me in the paths of righteousness. For his name's sake. Verse 4. Yea, though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death. I will fear no evil, for thou art with me. Thy rod and thy staff, they comfort me. Verse 5. Thou preparest a table before me in the presence of my enemies. Thou anointest my head with oil my head with oil. Thou anointest my head with oil. Thou anointest my head with oil. And what is the effect of my head carrying oil? My cup runneth over. I prophesy to somebody because you are the owner of this prophecy. I move you to the realm of the overflow. Verse Six, surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever and ever. The Lord bless the reading of his word in Jesus' name. This month in this church is... Tag the month of the anointing. This month is the month of the anointing. And this morning, we are looking at the subject, anointing for abundance, part one. Anointing for supplicity. Anointing for plenty. Anointing for too much. Anointing for abundance. Please, i like you to hear this. You cannot carry oil on your head and be a victim of shortage. You cannot carry oil on your head and then you are a candidate of lack and scarcity. Na lie. Na lie. Anointing fights lack. Anointing fights scarcity. Can I pray for only one person here? 
Today, I speak from this altar. Every spirit of lack and scarcity, every spirit of shortage, every spirit of eating from hand to mouth, every spirit of not getting what you are meant to get, every spirit of getting small, 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 you can't get something big so that you can do something big in life. I stand as the servant of God. I speak over your life. Let that spirit die of your life. I command that spirit to go. I drive that spirit out of your life. 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 Jump on your feet and shout. Take your seat. Oh yeah. Makes life easy. <laughs> oh yeah. Makes life very easy. Oh yeah. Makes life. Makes life sweet and meaningful. You are not. You are not frustrated because. There is something from heaven that is on you that is making life easy for you. <laughs> David, where we read our text, eh? thou anointest my head with what? With oil. My cup runneth what? Over. Because I have oil on my head, that oil reflects on something that flows through my hand. Because I carry oil on my on my head, then it affected the works of my hands. It affected the business of my hands. It affected the resources flowing through my hands. Beloved brothers and sisters, if there's anything that you should endeavor to get, endeavor to get is the oil. I'm telling you. It's the oil. It's the oil. It's, it's a magnet. It's a magnet. The oil magnetizes resources. The oil magnetizes this that will make life sweet and meaningful. The nothing attracts, make you attractive like the oil. Put it that way. Nothing makes a person attractive like the oil. In the crowd, you can be singled out because of the oil. In the crowd, you are singled out because of the oil. Leave church without oil this morning. That amen is not correct. Leave church without oil this morning. Leave church without oil this morning. If I hear your amen, take it in the name of Jesus. So very quickly, what are the two laws of abundance? What are the two laws of abundance? Number one, is the law of integrity. What are the laws of abundance? Number one is the law of integrity. The law of integrity. Abundance answers to truthfulness. Hear me. Abundance answers to sincerity. Abundance answers to straightforwardness. Abundance does not answer to crookedness. Except, except you are not desiring the abundance from God. But if it is the abundance from God, it answers to, to truth. It answers to truth. May God give you grace for a life of integrity. So your abundance is at the mercy of integrity. Your abundance is at the mercy of integrity. Maybe there is somebody seated in this first service that have been blaming the devil for suffering. Blaming the devil for suffering. Blaming witches and wizards for suffering. Blaming satanic forces for suffering. Bl blaming deities uh, and, and, and powers that be for suffering. My counsel to you is leave them alone. Sit down and think. What is your level of integrity with God and with men? What is your level of integrity with Jehovah God and with men? 
if you are sincere, my God will lift you up. Very simple. Very simple. Anybody doing business that is not straightforward cannot succeed in business. Are you aware of that? <laughs> cannot succeed in business. Because there are people that are willing to give you goods on credit. Eh? They can stock your shop with goods on credit. Right? It is integrity. It is sincerity that will make you sell those items and return their own portion and keep your own profit. Is that correct? <laughs> and then they will keep sending to you. They will keep sending to you. May God Almighty, if this is the only thing he will do, baptize somebody in this service with the spirit of integrity. Proverbs chapter 11, we are looking at verse 3. Proverbs 11 verse 3. Proverbs 11 and in verse 3. Proverbs chapter 11 and in verse 3. The integrity of the upright shall guide them, guide them and lead them to abundance. The integrity of the upright shall guide them and lead them to surplus. But the perverseness, coni coni craftiness of transgressors shall what? Shall destroy them. So, so, perverseness, craftiness is destruction. While integrity is leading. Integrity leads. Integrity leads. No wonder the Bible says the steps of a righteous man are what? Are ordered by the Lord. Integrity leads. It leads, it connects. Integrity will show you the way, show you what to do. I'm not talking about, I'm not talking about profession of integrity. I'm talking about manifestation of integrity. Because they are, they are not the same. There are people professing integrity. Professing integrity. What is profession, professing integrity? Professing integrity is, as you see me so, I don't like lying. I don't like I don't like somebody when no straight. But that person that is talking is worse than a liar. Have you seen people like that? I, I hate lies. <laughs> but if they tell you good money, inside the good money, there is what? There's lie. Professing integrity. Manifesting integrity, take your seat. Manifesting integrity is their lives reflect it. You see them, you see it. There's, 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 there's a reflection of integrity that shows around them. A reflection of integrity that shows around them. I prophesy on somebody here today in the name that is a prophet, free other name. The name of Jesus. Receive grace to be straight in life. Receive grace to be straight in life. Receive grace to be straight in life. Receive grace to be sincere to men and God. You don't have to be crafty to succeed. <laughs> you, you don't have to be crafty to succeed. The, the earth is not waiting for the profession of integrity. The whole earth is waiting for the manifestation of integrity. The earth, the world, is waiting for the manifestation of integrity. For the manifestation of integrity. So, hunger, lack, scarcity is traceable to insincerity and dishonesty. Insincerity and dishonesty. Insincerity and, and dishonesty. How to know people of integrity? How do you know them? We have been hearing integrity, integrity. Pastor, how do I know people that exist with integrity? Number one, they always tell the truth. The truth. They always tell the truth. 
no matter who is pleased and no matter who is what offended they always tell the truth if you like kill them kill them you will always get the truth from them number two how do you make people of integrity they do not compromise they are not compromisers they have a standard and they stand on their standard they have principle they have principle integrity she can laugh with everybody but if you touch her in an ungodly manner she reacts she reacts look the way i laugh don't think that is how i live my life she reacts integrity 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 they don't compromise they don't compromise because they needed to pass an exam. They don't compromise because they needed to get a job. They don't compromise because they needed to get a contract. They don't compromise because they needed to make business. They don't. They don't. They don't. They don't. There are people that can compromise their faith to get contracts. The man's name is Moses. Now his name is what? Musa. <laughs> Mala Musa and he will be answering. His name is Moses. <laughs> some say, some say, let me get it later. I will ask God for forgiveness. How do you know people of integrity? Number three, they do not promise what they cannot do. Look at somebody say. <laughs> They don't, they don't promise what they cannot do. I don't like the way you are looking. See me tomorrow. I need to give you 50,000. Tomorrow, see me. <laughs> they will carry your whole bag. By the time you go, they will tell you the man has traveled. <laughs> he has traveled. You will call him. Phone switch off. Integrity. Nobody will kill you if you cannot do anything for anybody. If you cannot do anything for anybody, tell the person you cannot do it now. But the, when the time comes, you will look for it. There's nothing wrong. Don't show people that, I don't know how to put it. The English is refusing to come. Don't show people that you have when you don't have. Is God speaking to anybody here? Yeah. Don't show people. Don't show people. You didn't come into this world for showmanship. You didn't come into this world for showmanship. You didn't come into this world to please men. You came into this world to please God. To please your maker. To please your, your, the one who sent you into this world. Praise God. Somebody sent me a text. I want to commit suicide. I want to commit suicide. Yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> I want to commit suicide. I've lost houses. I've lost cars. I've lost friends. I've lost everything. I want to commit suicide. I've gone, I've gone to over 100 churches. 100 churches, no solution. So pastor, promise me, if I come to Banner of Life, what will you do? I didn't answer one word. Am I God? Ah, want to put me in problem? <laughs> <laughs> eh? I'm not God. I don't know whether you understand. See, I am a human being like yourself. If you commit suicide now, you go straight to hellfire. Straight to hellfire. What have you gained? What have you gained? It is true that there are challenges. It is true that there are troubles and problems and you, and you have lost everything. But do you know what God is planning for you tomorrow? Can I hear somebody's loudest amen? amen. Anybody that, 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 that is thinking suicide is a confirmation of hopelessness. You don't believe that anything good can happen tomorrow. I told the brother, just come to church, let us see. Let us see. But as a woman, I can't promise anything. I can't promise anything. 
It's only God that can promise you something and do it too. I'm telling you, human beings, human beings. Number what? How do you know people of integrity? Number what? Number four, their yes is yes and their no is no. Their yes is yes and their no is no. So if they tell you yes, just stand on it. And if they tell you no, stand on it. Stand on it. The, the meaning of that is they don't exist with double tongue. They don't exist with double tongue. Their yes is yes. And their no is no. Number five, they are dependable and trustworthy. How do you know people of integrity? They are dependable and trustworthy. Dependable. There are people in this church I can't depend on them. I, I mean, I can't, I can't, yes, I can't depend on them and I cannot trust them for anything. For anything. I cannot, I cannot vouch for them. I don't know whether you understand what I'm talking about. That is not supposed to be. That is not supposed to be. No, 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 no. What are you telling me? What are you telling me? That, that this person did this is a lie. It's a lie. No, he can't do it. He can't do it. Can't. That he went to steal. Who? He went to steal. God forbid. It will never be your portion. That they caught Kwesi with gun doing robbery. <laughs> no, it's not possible. I'll tell them that in a lie. There are some people, if they are in police station, I can go there. There are some people, if they are in police station, they call me and say, wrong number. <laughs> because I know for him to have gone to police, something is wrong. He has committed. He has committed. So, so people that, that have to interpret it, they, they are dependable and they are they are. Trust word. Number six. They will never steal with their hands. They will never steal with their mouth. They will never steal with gun or with pen. Those are sources through which people steal. <laughs> people of integrity, they will never steal with their mouth. They will never steal with their words. With their hands, they will never steal with pen, and they will never steal with gun. I think there's another one now. Cyber crime. <laughs> People of integrity. People of integrity. People of integrity. Even in church, there are people stealing with mouth. Even in church. They steal with mouth. Steal with pen. Let us fear God. Integrity. 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 Number seven. They do not they do not tell stories when it comes to payment or sharing of profits. They don't tell stories. When it comes to payment or sharing of what? Of profits. Ah, they are going well. They are going well. Right? They just did business. They are going well. And why they are going well is because the money has not been paid. As soon as the money is paid, I've been looking for you. What, excuse me, what, what are you looking for me for, Seth? Ah, would you allow me rest? <laughs> it's because something has entered. Something has entered. People of integrity, they don't operate like that. They don't behave like that. They don't. So those are the seven ways through which you can know people of integrity. Number one way, which is considered as the law of abund ab uh, abundance is the law of what? Integrity. Number two, the law of capacity development. The law of capacity development. The law of capacity development. If you want to see abundance, enlarge your capacity. Otherwise, God will, God will waste his resources. The law of capacity development. 
2 Kings chapter 4 and in verse 6. Leko pariga sata yagadish. E gabreka sata yagadagabush. Rekete suka praga sata yagadas. And when thou art come. Okay, sorry. And it came to pass. When the verses were full. That she said unto her son, bring me yet a vessel. And he said unto her, there is not a vessel more. And the oil stayed. The moment the vessels were no more available, the miracle of oil stopped flowing. The moment the vessels were no longer available, the miracle flow of oil ceased. Beloved brothers and sisters, hear me. God has no problem of giving us blessing of abundance as long as the vessels are available. As long as the vessels are available. The challenge is the availability of the vessels. <laughs> availability of the blessing. So if abundance increases and capacity does not increase, waste will occur. And God hates wastes. He hates waste. He hates waste. How many of you remember the story of Peter? That is a clear picture of a man that didn't increase his capacity and the supply came. Multitude of fishes and the net got what? Broken. The meaning of that is as the net got broken, some fishes what? Some fishes escaped. Some fishes escaped. And that is a picture of waste. He didn't increase his capacity. He didn't increase his capacity. He didn't increase his capacity. For somebody seated there, maybe, maybe the capacity you need to increase for this blessing to come is going back to school and upgrade your educational qualification. For somebody, get an OND. For somebody, get HND. For somebody, get a BS. For somebody, just, 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 just exist with the heart loaded. Capacity enlargement. With the heart loaded. So that if five million now enter your hand, you will not, the money will not miss road. I don't know. Is God speaking to anybody? It will not miss road. So the heart is empty. So when the five million comes, doesn't know what to do. He doesn't know what to do with it. For somebody, your capacity enlargement is Bring yourself to a point where you are a husband material if you are not married. You are a wife material if you are not married. So that when the husband comes, the husband will not be wasted. <laughs> For somebody else, your capacity, your capacity enlargement is get your international passport on ground. Anything can happen any day. Get it. Get it. Enlarge your capacity. Enlarge. Bring more vessels. They say no more vessels. So the oil stopped flowing. The oil stopped flowing. I speak to somebody in this first service. In the name that is above every other name. By the anointing, your oil shall never cease to flow. Your oil shall never cease to flow. If I hear your amen, let angels be on assignment. Let angels be on assignment. Let angels be on, a, on assignment. Rise on your feet. Walk to five people. Say, enlarge your capacity. Enlarge. Enlarge. Can I hear your loudest amen? Enlarge. 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 Enlarge your capacity. Enlarge. Because... God can decide to visit you any day. Any day. Any day. For a businessman, right? You are doing business and, 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 and you don't have a registered company. Enlarge your capacity. You don't have a registered company. And then, and then bam! God visited you and then there's a contract of five billion. You didn't say amen because you don't believe it. <laughs> there's a contract of five billion. Eh? And they say, uh, excuse me, which account do we credit? And you say, oh, account. My name is Stephen Kwesi. They say, what are you talking about? 
this one is not. <laughs> this one is not ready. But when you say credit, which account is that now? Okay, Shiloh Base Boutique. <laughs> they say yes. <laughs> and if, if the company should be registered. Should be registered. A large company. Don't behave like don't behave like God. God is a magician. God is not a magician. God is a miracle worker. And miracles are subjected to protocols. There are processes to miracles. There are processes. It's only magic that do not need a protocol. Somebody can do like this now. Say, see, mommy. Is that the kind of... <laughs> but miracle, we say... In the morning, leave your house. Go out. Go to your place of work. And then as you do that, something will happen. Do you understand what we are talking about? Beloved brothers and sisters, look at somebody again. Tell the person, enlarge your capacity. Take your seat. Enlarge. Enlarge your capacity. Enlarge your capacity. Enlarge your capacity. Enlarge your capacity. Enlarge. Pastor PJ Ina, I'm enlarging my capacity. Enlarging it. 10,000 people enter here now. I will handle them. Because I can preach to empty church. I was ready to do that this morning. Praise God. <laughs> I, was, I was ready. To, it is rain. Satan, you are too small. Few minutes to six. Rain, rain no fall since 12 midnight. Nine, nine. All right. <laughs> Before 5.30, I was here. Praise God. I say, praise God. God says I should prophesy this prophecy on somebody. You are the owner. This is the prophecy. May people you don't know show up to help you. Who is that? Let God feel your loudest amen. May people you don't know, you don't know them from Adam. You don't know them from anywhere. You can't trace their origin. I stand on this altar with God's grace and mantle upon my life. I command them to show up and let them help your life. It's done. Because something just happened. Two ways. Tight. Fulfill the law of abundance. You can't talk about abundance and don't talk about the matter of tithes. You can't talk about abundance and you don't talk about the matter of tithes. Two laws. Two laws. Or two ways tithes fulfill the law of abundance. Number one, tithes in Christians fulfill the law of origin or the law of source. Titan Christians fulfill the law of origin or the law of source. What we are saying is, when you tight faithfully and correctly, what you are communicating to God is, God, you are the source. God, without you, I wouldn't have gotten this money. God, without you, I, would have, I wouldn't have been paid this salary. You are my source. You are my origin. That is what you are doing. By titan. I acknowledge you as my helper. I acknowledge you as the one that just gave me this money. I acknowledge you as the one that just put this money in my hands. So when you are seated in, I mean, if you are seated in this meeting, and you don't tight, what you are basically communicating is God is not the origin, he's not the source, he has nothing. As far as the money that has entered your hand is concerned, there's nothing he has done. Including the life, you are the owner of the life. Including the air, you are the owner. God didn't support you in any way. It's, it's, it's too risky not to be a tighter. It's too risky not to be a tighter. It's too dangerous not to be a tighter. There are so many negativity that you stand to come your way when you are not a tighter. Number two, tighten Christians obey the law of priority. Tighten Christians obey the law of priority. The law of priority. The meaning of that is God 
God, you are first. God, you are first. You are first. You are first. There are Christians that don't spend any money. When money enters their hand, unless the tithe has been paid, unless the tithe has been subtracted, they don't spend money on any expenses, unless the matter of tithe is dealt with. Church, are you hearing what I'm saying here this morning? You know, I, 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 I have to, I have to, I have to say this, and with, 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 with prayer in my heart that, I, that it will touch everyone, for everybody to become, to become faithful titers. Because the other day, I got up early hours of the morning and I was praying. Praying for the blessings and the prosperity of the people. And God told me that the people I'm praying for, they are not involving me in their finances. They are not involved in their finances. So, so frustrating. I'm not involved. So, how do you want, how do you want me to prosper them? Matthew chapter 6 and in verse 33. But seek ye first the kingdom. Seek ye first. You can be a seeker of the kingdom first and things will not be added to you. Look at it. You can be a seeker of the kingdom first. Every time money enters your hand, the first thing is God's passion, which is the tithe. The Bible says it is holy. It is holy to him. You can't keep anything that belongs to God around your life. Are you not thinking of your life? Are you not thinking of the life of your wife? Are you not thinking of the life of your children? Are you not thinking of posterity? Are you not thinking of tomorrow? A good man, a good man, if you have left this earth, your money will still be on ground. That is the kind of money God will give you. That amen is not correct. That amen is not correct. The devil, the devil has made people not to see the importance of tithe. I'm telling you, he has made people not to see it. He said, see, God consider it and consider it highly. When you come and say, this is it, this is it. Can I hear your loudest amen? amen. Please, this message is also important, but this message is it's a sub subheading. It's only, it's only related to the married ones here. But those that are not married, you may learn something from it. Very quickly, four types of husbands that can send wives to early grave. You want to know? <laughs> because, <clears throat> just leave it, leave it. It's part of, just leave it. Because there are, there, are, there, are, there are people that have died before their time because of the matter of marriage. There are people that, 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 have, that, that are having hypertension now because of marriage matter. Because of marriage matter. Four types of husbands that can send wives to early grave. Women, you will not enter your grave early in Jesus' name. Number one, a womanizing husband. Anything in skirt, lie, lie, I will not let go. A womanizing husband. Carry one sickness and bring the sickness home. Sickness, Boku. Sickness everywhere. Bring the sickness home. The woman is abandoned, just, 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 just existing as, as a shadow of herself. One man told me, said, before he gave his life to Christ, I've forgotten the number of wives, so that I don't lie, but I think more than two wives. And then he had, uh, he had concubines, and he's paying their house rent. He had concubines everywhere. A, a, wom a womanizing husband can send the wife to early grave. Early grave. Early grave. Number two, an idle and lazy husband. The whole load is on the woman. There are men like that. Uh, lazy. lazy. They are 
at home waiting for their wife to go and make money and bring. A woman is not meant to be the provider of the home. You, as a man, you are the Jehovah Jireh of your home. Wife should look up to you. Children should look up to you. You, you don't look up to your wife. Say, how business do they wait till you bring? That kind of word shouldn't come out of your mouth. Wait till you bring. They never pay on a salary. Today be 31st. <laughs> no. Take your seat. No. No. <laughs> Any man that is lazy, you can send your wife to early grave because see, a women, women they don't have they don't have strength like men. That is the truth. They don't have strength like men. Even though there are some women, they can beat their husbands. <laughs> because I heard that in Sabongeri here, there's a woman. Anytime the, the, the man messes up, she will lock the door. The woman will lock the door. It's, it's not... It's, it's not, the, it's not the man. It's men that usually lock the door. But in this case, the woman will lock the door. I start beating the man. And then the man will be shouting, my father warned me not to marry you. I didn't hear my father. <laughs> <laughs> my father warned me. I remember my father warned me. <laughs> you, you see, you see. You can't, you can't exhaust the woman. Look at, look at, do you know what it takes for a woman to bring out four children? Five children, six children. So, so much has left her. So much has left her. Your own is to put. And then at the end of the day, women, you will not die before your time. Please, please. Number three, a stingy husband can send his wife to early grave. Stingy husband. Stingy husband. Stingy husband. There is no amount of pressure that can make him bring money. There are men like that. No amount of pressure. Not that the money is not there. The money is here. The money is here. But he can, there are men that can spend money outside, but they can't spend money in the house. They can give women money, but their wives, Abba, wife now wife. He feels that this one, she has no, no place to go. That this one don't come stay. That is, that is upside down thinking. Mother of your children. Mother of your children. Two of you are one. You can't give your wife money. You know, ma money matter is causing a lot of problems in homes. Serious problem. Serious problem. Every day the woman, the hand is on the job. The hand is, every day. Every day. I cannot be waiting for this, my husband. I, and before you know it, madam, they say your blood pressure is what? your blood pressure has risen. And finally, a disgraceful husband can send his wife to early grave. Disgraceful husband. What do I mean by that? There are, there are things he does that brings disgrace to the wife. Things like, number one is what? Stealing. Number two is what? Drunkenness. They carried the man from gutter and brought him home. Say, Madam, sorry, we saw your husband in the gutter. Hi. <laughs> sorry, we picked him on the road. And luckily we searched his pocket and we saw we saw we saw ID card or something. And so we had to trace. And they said this is his house. Hi. What a disgrace. 
such a disgrace. Disgraceful husband. One woman, the, the, the husband lost the husband lost his job and the woman was celebrating. Ah, ah. Yes. My, me and mommy, we went to the house. We, she was happy. He said, you just go out now. You don't go work. Ah, you don't lose his job. I did thank God. Well, why? You, <laughs> your, your husband has lost his job. He said, because we, the time he was working, getting money, I don't used to see him. Now that he's not working, no money, he's always out in the house. So I prefer it. Women, wouldn't you prefer that one? That is, that is, it's working, getting money, but it's not available. Even the money is not given you. And it's not available. Now it's not working. Now there's no money and it's. <laughs> Disgrace, disgraceful husband. He can, he can, he can beat you in the marketplace. In the marketplace. Who is that man you are standing with? You have been talking with him for the past 20 minutes. I, I've been somewhere watching you. Bam, bam. Do we have men like that? Do we? <laughs> Four types of wives that can send husbands to early grave. Men, do you want to hear? <laughs> four, four, four types of wives that can send husbands to early grave. Number one, a high maintenance wife. You know maintenance? A high maintenance wife. The man can no longer cope. She's too high to maintain her alone is 50,000. Highly materialistic. Any new cloth that come out. Abba. I must go there. Every day they are in the market. Not, not, not to buy things. They went for the to the market for what? Window shopping. To bring pressure to the house. Always, they want to know the latest, the latest, the latest, the latest. Men, be careful with such women. Oh. They can frustrate you and send you to your early grave. There are women like that. You see them. You know that they are too, you can't maintain them. I don't know why you go marry them. You can't maintain them. Very expensive to maintain. Very expensive. The cream is how much? 85,000 naira. The cream. And she will use the cream for only three weeks. <laughs> just, just flash. She, she just wants to be flashy, shiny. Bing, 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 just every time. Number two. A disrespectful wife can send her husband to early grave. Disrespectful wife. Please, when I say disrespectful, I don't necessarily mean alone by words. Some women don't talk, but if they look you like this, you are, it's enough. <laughs> <laughs> I don't know how they do this. There are some, there's they, how they do their eyes. The eye will turn. It's enough. <laughs> it's enough language of disrespect. They will do like this. It's enough. <laughs> they won't talk. But when they, when they show you some action, hi, you won't sleep. You won't sleep. Disrespectful wife. A disrespectful wife. Can I have my food? That is the kitchen for you there. Yeah, the kitchen. What? What? Men, can you take that? Talk to me. <laughs> I 
Say, that is the road to the kitchen. Don't you know the road to the kitchen? Me, you never have that kind of wife. There are women, eh? If they, if they mean you, you will pack out of the house. <laughs> I'm, I'm telling you, they, you can't stay. You can't stay. You say you're a stubborn man. May you never meet a stubborn woman. <laughs> May every day's fight. You start today. Where you stop today, you continue tomorrow. There are women like that. You are ready to go to work, they lock the door. Not that they can beat you. They stand up on the door. Where are you going? Come and pass now. Just making you pass through hell. Making you pass through hell. And, and if you cannot find happiness in your home, I don't think you can find happiness outside. Your home. Your home. Haba, your home where you rest. They call your home a resting place. Your business center is not a resting place. When you go to business center, you are sleeping. You need deliverance. It's not a resting place. <laughs> your home is, is the resting place. In business center, you are to be awake, alert, work. But you come home to what? To rest. A discouraging wife, number three can send husband to early grave. A discouraging wife. A discouraging wife. Okay, you don't come back today. I'm not saying, I'm not saying you don't come back with anything. You, <laughs> now today I know you. That's, 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 there's nothing you do that you are receiving encouragement from your wife. There's nothing you do that is a source of encouragement. She doesn't believe that you can succeed. She doesn't believe that you can achieve anything. A discouraging wife. That's the worst kind of woman to live with. The worst. You are failing. She will help you to fail more. If you are even succeeding, she will, she will, she will push you into failure. She doesn't help you in any form. Doesn't assist you in any form. Spiritually, physically, she can't pray for you <laughs> because every wife is supposed to be supposed to exist with the ministry of intercession. Intercession, every married woman is an intercessor. You must, you must crave for that grace to be an intercessor, Inter intercede for your husband, intercede for your children. That is your major assignment. Every mother, every mother, discouraging wife, discouraging wife. You, you came back home and you said, today, today is, today is bad. I know, ah, story, story. <laughs> there's, there's nothing like, don't worry, don't worry. If it is not good today, it shall be good tomorrow. He gives a man long life. It gives a man long life. Let me tell you two things that gives a man long life. Peace. Peace and hope. Peace and hope. When you are in a state of calmness, no tension, no pressure, and then you are highly optimistic that where you are is the least place you will ever be, you will succeed in life. Praise God. And finally, a nagging wife can send the husband to early grave. Nagging nagging. Women, you know nagging. Answer me, I'm talking to you. You know nagging. Nagging. Before you talk one, don't talk ten. Nagging. 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 Every little thing she will talk and talk and talk. You won't have peace. If you want to eat, hunger will die. Nagging. It is better to remain single than to marry a woman that is nagging. I'm telling you, it is better to remain single than to, because, because, because men are dying before their time. I'm telling you, dying before their time. The man slept, no headache, nothing, and he couldn't wake up. But you don't know what went through his heart before he slept. Up. Couldn't you wake up? He's gone. Tired. Tired. 
on the bed, she's already nagging. I've been telling you, anytime you come back from this, your mechanic work, bait, bait, bait. You see, dirtiness, dirtiness. I hate dirtiness. If to say I know sin, I so you be. I for no marry you. In fact, I'm. <laughs> <That's>... <laughs> you are succeeding already. That amen is not correct. You are succeeding already. Jump on your feet with a shout of amen. Has God spoken to anybody here? Lift up your hands and wave them to the King of Kings. Give him all the praise and give him all the glory. Make up the Zuga Braga Shata Lagadas. Lift his hands and celebrate him. Magnify him and exalt him. Father, we give you the praise. Lord, we give you the glory. Lord, we give you the honor. Lord, we give you the praise and the glory. Mighty, mighty God, we thank you. Jehovah, Elohim, El Shaddai, we thank you. Blessed be your name in Jesus' precious name. We have prayed. Let me hear your loudest amen. amen. We are going to dance for two minutes and just, just two prayer points, and then and then we close the service. Uh, if you have a testimony, was it Minister Sheriff that took the testimony? If, you, if there's something God has done for you and you have not testified, quickly. Somebody will be by the entrance of the church. Minister Sheriff, let's know what God has done. Lift up your hands and wave them to the King of Kings. I appreciate him and adore him. Wave those hands and give him praise. You know why I want you to dance now? I want you to dance now and dance the way you are supposed to dance because this week must be better than last week. Let me hear somebody's loudest amen. Let's go. You are God. You are not just Miko. You are not just Lajo. You are the good God. You are God. You are God. You are not just Miko.
lift up your hands and give the mother praise. And give the mother glory. Give the mother praise and give the mother glory. Give the mother praise and give the mother glory. Give the mother praise and give the mother glory. Lift up your hands. Say, Father, at the top of your voice, Father, I declare somebody, somebody shall help me this week. Put your hands together. Go ahead. Shakataza gada gaba dala gabus, lekote zuga braga sata miga dala, lekote zu. I call forth my helper this week. I call forth my helper. Do you understand that prayer at all? I call forth. Let somebody that will help me show up, show up, show up, show up, show up, show up this week, this week, this week. Let somebody that will help me show up this week. Let somebody that will help me show up this week. Hey, hey, hey. Let somebody that will help me show up this week. In Jesus, precious name we have prayed. Lift up your hands. Say after me, Father, this week, I declare, shall be better than last week. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Put your hands together, turn it into prayer. Father, thank you because this week shall be better, shall be better, shall be better, shall be better. I am too sure, I am aware, I know. This week shall be better than last week. This week shall not be a disappointing week. This week shall not be a frustrating week. This week shall not be, shall not be, shall not be, shall not just be a wasted maker. Father, this week shall be better. In Jesus' precious name we have prayed. I want to pray for you now. I want you to be connected to this prayer. Just one prayer that I have to pray for you. And you know the prayer? May God give you a surprising package this week. Stretch your hand as somebody expecting to receive. From this service, I put him in your hands a surprising package. I put in your hand a surprising package. It is the spiritual that controls the physical. Hey, my legacy dish. I put in your hands something surprising. Something surprising. It's a surprising package that will speak, that will attract favor, that will attract money, that will attract progress, that will attract success, that will attract promotion. In the name of Jesus, we shall it in the name of Jesus. Father, we thank you. Blessed be your name. We owe it as a vow to thank you when next we gather in your presence. In Jesus' name. Give the Lord a clap and please take your seat. As we listen to this testimony, 